So Suratul Mustaqim encompasses those uncompromising texts, Aqidah, and acts of Ibadah. Then it has those texts that scholars have negotiated till now. And then it includes the intellectual output of scholars. And what that means as I finish is that, yes, there can be an American Islam. I get hit, oh, what do you mean by American Islam? You're going to try to change? No, I'm not talking about changing those fixed texts. I'm not talking about, you know, changing those texts that are different about according to some postmodern philosophy. But when it comes to doing what's best for people here to keep their faith and spread this faith, I got to make that call when I'm allowed to. And what that means for the younger generations, you as youth, is that Islam is a source of inspiration, a transformative energy that is going to stop you from living a binary existence. Because one of the questions I have about Islamic schools is, is your goal to create a binary existence or a synthesis? The goal should be a synthesis. Because believe me, America needs Islam just as bad as we do. I saw in, in Boston in the last four months, 61 converts. Puerto Rican, African American, upper class white folks, Cambridge, Wayland, Dorchester. And a 14, 19 year old Puerto Rican girl walked in my office and said, I'm Puerto Rican and white. All these dudes is looking at my backside. All they want is my digits. I am a human being, Imam. I was like, who are you? And then she said, it is your job to guide the youth of America. Where are the young Muslims? I was like, man, can you get a khutbah tomorrow? He's like, this is like, sadaqallah azim dude. Like, she's dropping it. I was like, are you Muslim? She's like, no. I was like, what are you talking about then? She's like, I want to learn taf sar Quran. I was like, it's not taf sar, it's tafsir. And she studied tafsir Quran for two weeks in English. And then one day she did it. And two weeks later, she got married, alhamdulillah. And now she's holding it down. But she told me, the young Muslims, where are they? Where are they in the sense of integrated into our culture so that they bring the nur of Muhammad وسلم, into the public square? That it touches the people. So when Dr. Majid tells you to go forth and engage, it's not because he's a modernist sellout, it's because he's holding on to one of those important principles of Sirat al-Mustaqim. And if you were to amputate one of those principles from Sirat al-Mustaqim, either too far to the right or too far to the left, this is bidah. And this is extremism. But as our Sheikh Islam Bashir, he said to us, Sirat al-Mustaqim encompasses the entire totality of Muhammad's message. From yu'allimuhum, from yuzakihim, all the way to akhlaq and teachings. So as young American Muslims, what that does is give you a creative impulse that should not be suffocated by culture, should not be suffocated by false notions about religion, and as converts, in order to be Muslim, we don't have to change our names and adopt Arab clothing, the thobe that so many of us wear that say it's the sunnah. Do the research. The thobe was introduced 300 years after his death. It came from Persia, dude. That was the clothes of the Persians. We should not have to adopt a culture so we go back to our neighborhood and speak to our boys in the park. They're like, who are you? Don't you know me? I'm Abdul Malik. I never knew no one named Abdul Malik. And what are you wearing? I got some candy. <laughs> and that happened to a brother of mine. One of our homies who converted to Islam wore the thobe every day in a turban, not to chastise anyone, but Imam Nawi never wore a turban or a kufi when he led the salah. And that's Imam Nawi was a mujtahid in the Shafi Madhab. And he went to the bank, dressed like that, and a man came to him and said, Man, where can I buy that costume, yo? Yo, that, you look just like Bin Laden, B. And I'm not saying that to, to make fun of anyone. If you want to dress that way, that's your business. I don't, I'm, I'm pro-choice. But I'm just saying wisdom-wise, man. For us, we go home dressed that way, man. We're going to flip our parents. And my father cried when he saw me dressed like that. He said, what happened to my son? What did they do to my son? Even his dress code has changed. Where is my boy? I said, well, I changed my name, too. And I don't eat your meat. And that music is haram. And let's tear down them pictures. 
and get rid of the dog. <laughs> and the beer, got to go. And they were like, but we're not Muslims. <laughs> we're kufar. I was like, so what? Double Islam me up in this house right here, boy. My dad was like, but who pays the bills and the mortgage? I was like, okay, well, mortgage is a haram. <laughs> so what that last final principle means is that there's a lot of hope for this future generation and that you have a responsibility to lend yourself to centrist scholarship. Centrist scholarship who is able to respect the nuances of this Sirat al-Mustaqim. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you. May Allah increase this uh, important institution. What I love about this institution is you see, according to dress code, all kinds of Muslims here. And that's healthy, man. That's a very healthy thing. Because our community is not simply a monolith. Read the Pew study about Muslims. 15% of Muslims in America even go to the masjid. So this is not the community. We're the minority. The majority of Muslims are where? God knows. And we have a responsibility not only to be ministers to them, but custodians of others. Jazakallah khairan. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaikum wa